Hello my fellow gamers, my name is Peter and welcome to my first basic battle tutorial. In this video I'll be talking about unit orders, unit movement, attacking with units, creating armies, groups and moving them in formation. For this I'm going to use a custom battle between Rome and Carthage. I am going to set up both teams to have appropriate number of cavalry, range units and melee units. My Roman general is going to be a commander while Carthage is going to have a warrior for his general. I'll be using a full stack of units just so you can get a better feel for how an army is commanded. Okay, so let's start. While you're in your deployment zone, it is important to think about how your army is going to fight. For example, I usually like Yours to take to different kinds of cavalry, of place them in a single group and Battle call it, for example, orders. group 3. Then take close to the same amount and same quality of cavalry, call them group number 4 and place them on my right flank. So cavalry number 3 is on my left flank, cavalry number 4 is on my right flank. Now, in order for these units to stay in this formation, you have to use Ctrl plus G. Who breaks you will notice will a punished. little lock showing up next to the number 4. That means that now this formation is locked and whenever they move, they are going to move in that formation. I'm going to do the same thing for the group 3. Stay as you are. Now, when it comes to range units, you have to know many. that these units, these Valite's units, have a medium range. They are throwing javelins, so they cannot throw as far as a bow oh, unit can fire an arrow. By holding the space key, you can see this red line that is the farthest belongs to this auxiliary Syrian archers, while these two lines that are more closer belong to the Valites. Valites. Because of that, the Valites are going to go in front, Orders, while the archers are going to go behind them. Now, once they are grouped in group 5 and that group is locked by using Ctrl G, you can hold the space key and again see what is their range. As you can see, they do not really overlap as much because the archers have a longer range. So what you can do is take the archer unit and pull it back a little bit more. Now, if you look at it, you can see that the archer unit and the Valites are going to shoot at the enemy about the same time. This is important because once you engage the enemy, he's going to react to what you're doing. So if only one of your units is attacking, but he is now going to engage, that means you didn't have enough time for your Valites to shoot as well. This way, all of your units are going to shoot at the same time, and once the engagement starts, they are all going to be shooting, you are not going to be waiting for Valites to go into range. Now let's talk about infantry. It is important to take some units that have spears, because they are much better at fighting cavalry. While it is also very important to have sword units because they are your core. They are going to be fighting the enemy sword units and if necessary enemy spear units. Now when you are setting up your formation on the infantry, it is always a good idea to mix them up. For example, I have two eagle cohorts and two evocati cohorts. You don't want them to be standing right next to each other because they have different stats than these other units and it is important to mix them so you have a unit on each flank that can attack some enemy unit that you might want to attack with a different unit. So I'm going to take this Avocati cohort, move it to the left, take an Eagle cohort, move it to the right. Now I have a better mix of infantry units on my front line. At your service. I'm going to group them as Groups one. And ready. Now, if you want to move your units while they're grouped and not locked, if you hold the right, right mouse button, you're going to have to stretch them out again. But if you use Control G and lock are. this group, next time you click, you're going to have the same formation set up already and you just have to let go and set them to move. When it comes to Spearman, Why it is as important to have spearmen in the front as it is to have them on your flanks. In the front you need them in order to be able to protect your range units from enemy cavalry if they charge them from the front, 
while it is important to have them on the flanks if the enemy cavalry overruns your cavalry on your flanks and comes up to your flanks or behind you. So it is a good idea to set up your spear units, some of them in the middle, some of them on the flanks. You can either attach those units to group 1 or make a specific group, let's say group 2, just for them. It is a better idea, however, to keep them in the first group because then they are going to be walking together and you are not going to end up in a situation where you forgot to move your spearmen up front and they stay behind and not be able to combat the enemy cavalry and the enemy cavalry overwhelms you. Now, another way to move these units now that they are grouped and locked is using the arrow keys on your keyboard. You can move them back, forward, left, right, and if you hold the control key, you can even change their orientation to the left or right. Now the last thing you have left to do is to take your general and place him in the middle of your units because you want his area of effect to cover as many units and provide them with its morale boost. You can choose to incorporate him in group 1 or you can choose to set him up as a separate group, let's say 7. One thing that you should remember is that if your general is mounted, his walk speed is going to be faster than the infantry and range units. This would be your most basic approach to, to deploying your army. Range units in the front, infantry in the middle, spearmen in the middle and on the flanks, cavalry on the flanks. There are many different army setups and many different ways of deploying those armies. This suggests your basic setup based on an army that is full of all sorts of different units and they all have their uses. Now let's start the battle. Now how you can move your units in formation. Since we have locked group 1 with this little lock here by using Ctrl G, if I click on any of those units and hold the left mouse button, I'm going to get this little compass. With this I can move my units in this formation forward and choose wherever I wish for them to be. If I hold the Ctrl key, I can even rotate this formation to the left or right. You'll also notice that this arrow will be changed to two arrows if I let go of control. If I hold control there is only one arrow. What this means is that if you let go when there are two arrows, these units are going to be running. If you hold the control key and there is only one arrow and you let go, they are going to be walking. You can use the same way to move this group 5 which holds your range units by holding the left Benite. mouse button key on these units and, and then just pulling forward. Yes, As you can see now. these guys are going to run because they didn't hold the control key. In case this compass does not show up just deselect the unit, click on some other group, go back to that group and wait for this little tooltip to show up then hold the left mouse button and move it. As you can see first try I didn't get it, second try I got it. So it's not 100% that you're going to get it but just give it a shot. Now the trick is you don't really have to use it because once you have locked these units in formation you can use the right mouse button just hold it and place your units wherever you want them to go. If you don't want them to run you have to hold the shift key and let go. That way they're going to walk in formation to that point. When it comes to range units they have this ability called fire at will, which means they are going to pick and choose their enemy and shoot them. Now in this game there seems to be a little glitch because in previous games even if fire at will is toggled on you can still choose a unit and it will overwrite what unit it should be attacking. But here even if you choose a unit and fire at will is on the unit may by itself choose another target. So if you want full manual control you have to toggle this off and choose which unit should they attack by yourself. When it comes to the skirmish mode, this is going to allow your units to run away from melee units. If any melee unit is coming closer to your units, they are going to move back to a safe distance and then continue firing. If you are going to put your units right behind your main battle line, you should toggle this off because they are going to be moving even though there is no need. So even though you have units in front of your range units, but if your units come into contact with enemy units and they are close enough to your range units, if this is toggled on, they're going to move back even though there is no reason to be afraid because you have a line of units 
in between your range units and the enemy units. You can also use the arrow keys to move your unit or your whole army in formation. You can hold the control key and even change the orientation of this army as you can see here. This way you can move your army step by step and you don't even have to use your mouse. Now what you should remember is that once you're close enough to your enemy and once you're supposed to engage him, never use a group to attack a single unit. This is because all these units are going to get tangled into each other trying to go after the same unit because as you can see these lines, while they're in a group they are going to move together and they are going to engage once they get into rage as they are a range unit. But if you take a melee unit and click, you can see that since they are locked in a group, they have to move inside that group. So they cannot all go towards the enemy unit that you have chosen. But once you hold the control G and unlock that formation and click right click on the enemy unit, you can see that all the units are going to converge directly onto that unit. That is why I said never do that in a battle. You have to manually choose a target for each of your melee units to attack. Because this way you are going to avoid big melee blobs and they are not going to accomplish anything. Because attacking with all your units to a single enemy unit does not achieve anything beyond the first unit that reaches it will engage in combat while all the other units are just going to be attacking behind and not being able to fight it. That is called blobbing, that is something you always wish to avoid. As you saw, my unit was moving until it got into range and even though I told them to attack this unit, they are using their fire at will to attack this unit. Like I said, that is why before you engage you have to unlock your formation and use every unit attack for every enemy unit. You don't wish to attack as a group. Same goes for cavalry units. You can run them in groups, but you should never attack in groups. As you can see, while it's locked, it's again giving them just the order to move. Once you unlock the group and attack, they're all going to attack into a single enemy unit. This is not what you want. You want one of these units to go behind, one of them to go in the front, and one of them to go on the other side. This way you can encircle the enemy from all sides and attack him from multiple directions inflicting more than just the front attack, you can inflict morale penalties in the back and in the flank. You shouldn't forget like I just did to bring your general up once the melee starts. That is why you may want to keep him in your group 1 with your infantry or with your range units so that he is always close by and you do not forget to bring him. And as you can see over here I have 1 vs 1, 1 vs 1. Now this cavalry unit is free to either engage his range units or engage into the back of the rest of his units. Now as they hit, they are going to inflict massive morale damage. As you can see this unit is now going to withdraw. Once you have broken an enemy's flank, you can take your units either in a flank attack or you can order them to move and then use them as a back attack. This is called hammer and anvil by using a cavalry unit as a hammer while your infantry units are the anvil. This is going to inflict the maximum amount of morale penalties and make the enemy out. I believe that this is enough information for one basic battle tutorial video. Thank you for watching and please stay tuned for more.